Spending time with God is an investment. Spending time with God is an investment. See, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He looked at coming into the house of the Lord. It's just beautiful to be in the house of the Lord. And, and, and somebody, somebody invited somebody to church. Somebody invited somebody to be here today. And David said, I was glad when they he said, he said, he said, they said unto me. That means that. That was that was a pro. That was some folks said, "Come on, David. Why don't you come on to the house? Come on, David. You see, when you come to the house of the Lord, every time you and I have to drop some things that we think is important, so we can get to the house of the Lord. He can tell the Lord, thank you. So he looked at it as an investment, because when you come into the house of the Lord." Some time. Come on. Then we'll cry. God, I need you to bless me. Lord, you need to do this. I need you to deliver this. I need you to open this door. And I need you to open that door. I need you to open the doors of your heart. God, I feel like you're loving me up in here. Oh, no, no, I can be real. You all know I, I can be real. I'm trying to tell people I'm not here to make you happy. Huh? I'm here to help make you happy. Because when you get healthy, yeah. you know what the real meaning of happening is. And you know where it comes from. Let me move. 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 Spending time with God is an investment. Spending time with God is an investment. See, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He looked at coming into the house of the Lord. Actually, back in death, it's just beautiful to be in the house of the Lord. And, and, and if somebody, somebody invited somebody to church. Somebody invited somebody to be here today. And David said, I was glad when they, he said, he said, he said, they said unto me. That means that that was, that was a pro. That was some folks said, David, you see, when you come to the house of Lord, every time you and I have to drop some things that we think is important, so we can get to the house of the Lord. He can tell the Lord, thank you. So he looked at it as an investment, because when you come into the house of the Lord, we're going to save some time. God, I need you to bless me. Lord, you need to deliver this. I need you to deliver this. I need you to open this door. And I need you to open that door. I need you to open the doors of your heart. God, I feel like you're loving me up in here. Oh, you all know I can be real. You all know I, I can be real. I'm trying to tell people I'm not here to make you happy. Huh? I'm here to help make you happy. Because when you get healthy, yeah. you know what the real meaning of happening is. And you know where it comes from. Let me move. 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 Let Yes, 
It is the Lord God. And the way to be praised. How many of y'all know that the Lord is still doing great things? He's still doing great things despite of what it looks like, despite of the circumstances, despite of the situation. The Lord is still doing great things. Yes, Hallelujah. God bless you today. So glad each one of you are here and you all that are out there on Facebook and also on YouTube. We thank you for tuning in this morning. The Lord is willing to be praised. Yes, this is the fourth portion of our series concerning redeeming the time for the days are evil and making best use of our time. This is series four this week. Getting up the year, the Lord said that he wanted to ministering about time and, uh, and obedient to the spirit. Because a lot of times people don't realize how valuable time is. It takes time, amen, to be healed. It takes time to really develop relationships. It takes time, amen, for people, amen, to get through trials and tribulations. And people have been wounded. And sometimes people are smiling, but on the inside, they still have hurt. And that means that they are not healed yet, and they're still all wounded. So it takes some time for them to be healed and get over whatever happened to get over the past. It takes time to build. It takes time to tear down. We cannot do anything or say anything more that it does not involve time. Time is not to be wasted. Time is very, very important. Matter of fact, no one knows how much time we have left on the earth. Matter of fact, the Lord could return at any All right. God bless you. Would you go with us this morning to uh, Acts the third chapter? Acts the third chapter. And uh, we're going to begin reading at the first verse down to verse 10. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the third hour of prayer at the third hour I'm saying the third hour of prayer and means the ninth hour and I said make the third hour in the uh, Jewish amen in the Jewish community and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple ask of alms and fixing his eyes on him with John Peter said, look on us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. 
And he took him by the right hand and immediately took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he leaping up stood and walked and entered the temple with them. Walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. What had happened to him. I like to use for a man a title today the right place at the right time. At the right place at the right time. We see in this text today that we have a man that is crippled. He was he was born crippled. Scholar believing that this man was actually approximately 40 years of age. And he had been crippled from his mother's womb. We have a lot of people that are not only crippled in the physical body, yeah. but they are crippled, amen, in the spirit. They have been crushed, they have been wounded, they have been hurt, and many times they are not able to get around the way they used to get around, to be as mobile as they once were because of the pain and because of the hurt and because of the disappointments and because of the setbacks, many times, sometimes folks are so wounded and so hurt. Yes, this is me and they. Don't tell me I hear them say that men don't cry. Can I tell you that's a lie? Because they hurt too. Men had feelings. They had what you call he motion, and the, the females had the she motions. Everybody has some kind of motions. At times, it depends on what you're going through, what you're facing, what you're dealing with, what you did get, what you didn't get, what you did want, and what you didn't want. It has to deal with your emotions. So here he is, is this man laying at the beautiful gate. They have to go through that gate to get into the temple. And by going into the temple, with the main setting there, people would have to pass by him. And whenever someone would go by him, he was there begging for arms. Not only when they went in, and sometimes people came out of the temple and he still was there sitting, begging for arms. He got there because he had some good friends. I don't believe it was any women carrying him. I believe that it was men which are stronger in the physical world. Body that would pick him up and carry him there every day and shut him down there at the beautiful gate. Oh, how beautiful it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Do you not know that it's good to have good friends? And if I can tell you something and tell you that many times people say that you know who your friends are whenever you're down. But also, you also know who your friends are whenever you get promoted, whenever you go up, and whenever you get a real, 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 real good blessing, and especially uh, uh, when you get it before they get it, can they still get be your friend? See, a real friend will stick with you when you're best. A real friend will stick with you when you're up. Oh, he's just down. A real friend stay closer than any brother. Who am I talking to up in here and out there? So here's Peter, and here's Peter 
and, and his John and Peter actually, amen, was a leader at this particular occasion. Peter worked together with John. John and Peter worked together. It's very important that people be unified. Some people don't have the same rhythm, but when you get people in the same rhythm, amen, have the same rhythm, do you not know there's unity in rhythm? Hallelujah. Glory to God. When people get together and get together in time, hallelujah, look out. Hallelujah. That makes it unified. Well, many times, the right place at the right time. Many times you can be at the wrong place but the right time. It happens all the time. Sometimes people say, I'll meet you at 411 West Boulevard. And then the individual says, okay. And then we just goes to four, goes to four twelve West Boulevard, but he was on the right street, but the wrong address. So then he turns around and he calls the individual and say, Where are you at? You are late. And then the individual let him know I'm at 411 West Boulevard. And you at the wrong place. I said, but, and, but we are at the right time, but we're at two different we are two different places. So therefore, since we're at two different places, we we we, we, we ain't clicking here. We not we, we this ain't gonna work until we come together at the same place. Can you hear me today? Many times you can be a man at the right place. But it's the wrong time. And uh, there we go again. We got another situation and we have another problem because you say, well, I was at, I was at the right place, but uh, but you, you may have been at the right place, but 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 I've already left. I've already left. Hello, somebody. The timing, the timing, the timing. And that person may have said three o'clock, that's what they agreed on. But here comes this person in, amen, at 3.15. Hallelujah. So that man that was at 3, he waited just a little bit, he left. See, a lot of people don't like to be waiting around and dragging on time. There's just some people that are on time. There's just some people that are on time people. And then there's just some people that just, they're just not on time. And if you want to, if you really want to stay in line, you got to stay in time. Hello, somebody. Because God deals with time. He deals with time. It is, it is. Peter and John had to go into the temple. Being the ninth hour actually meant three in the afternoon. Here we are in the key of the day. Peter and John are going to go into the temple. Now, if you go back to uh, verse 1, uh, chapter 1 and 8, you see, Jesus told them, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then you go over into chapter 2, you see, where they were up in the upper room, 10 for 10 days, and how the Holy Ghost uh, had fell upon them. And they began to speak in tongues, yes, tongues, yes, tongues, as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. And then the congregation of people that were all down there from different tribes and nationality and nations, and they were just saying that all of these guys leaves, but they're speaking out different language. And so they said they got to be drunk. They were drunk. They have to be drunk on wine. Said, no, they're not drunk with wine, as you suppose, Peter says. But Peter said, this is them that the prophet Joel had spoken about and prophesied that in the last days that they would pour his spirit out of an awful flesh, and that your sons and your daughters, they shall prophesy. Hallelujah. Hello, somebody. And it's not only to you, but it's to you and to your children and to your children's children and to those that are far off. We are the those that are far off. Hello, somebody. God is still filling people with the power of the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and the Spirit of God gives them others. It has not quit. It has not ceased. God is still sending his power and still, amen, blessing me. You will talk to you over here. So here it goes, here it goes, here it goes. Here it goes, Peter and John. Going into the temple, 
Oh my goodness, there's a, a lame man sitting there. The man is crippled and the man is begging for harm. Just this man sitting there. And Peter and John, they see this man. And John, amen, along with Peter, working together. And I hear Peter tell him, say, I, I need you to look on us. The man is expected to receive some, some, some money. Uh -huh. uh, uh, you see, people say, I need you to look at me. I need, I need you to get, I need your attention. I need your attention. And, and, and the man looks at him as if he's supposing to receive something from them, some, some, some money from them. Uh, and then the early end goes, Peter said, listen, we don't have, uh, we do not have, uh, it, it, listen, sometimes, sometimes, I don't care how, how safe we are, so they got the Holy Ghost, sometimes you can't be broke. Now, when I say broke, that don't, don't mean here, don't mean you're always broke, but did you, when I say broke, that means you don't have your credit card with you at that time. That means that you're not able to write a check at that time. That means hey, man, you don't have no money on you at that time. So you do you you broke compared to, to, to where you're at right there, but really you're not broke because you 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 are broke now because you're not able you're not able to get you your assets. But you do have money. But then there's some people don't have money on them and don't have money nowhere else. Now that's what you call broke. Broke. Hello somebody. Hello, hello somebody. Hello. And so he looks Upon Peter and John expected to receive something. Don't know how long he's been sitting there. I don't know what time he put him there, but this is what time that Peter and John came into contact with this lame man. He looks at him and says, Look on us. And I like the way that this uh, text goes is because a lot of times people are expecting something. Many times when you run into people, they 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 especially you've seen people all they 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 begging and they uh, they out on street corners and what have you, and they begging for money. They begging for arms. They begging for for money, and they're everywhere. They are everywhere. They're in all different cities. But at this particular time, it was there. To this man is sitting there at this beautiful cave, waiting for people to go by, sitting there, begging for arms. Here comes Peter, and here comes John. Looks at the man and asks him, say, look on us. We don't, we don't have no, we don't, we, we, we don't have no silver. We don't have any gold. But in the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth. Now, before anything can happen, you, you, you have to be unified. Before this can even take place, you have to be in agreement. Before this can even take place, uh, we have to have the right attention. Everybody needs to be on the same page. And this miracle would never have ever taken place if everybody was not on the same page. It's hard to work with people when when you don't have the same mindset. It's hard to work with people when God is telling you to go right and someone else wants to go left. But I love it how that Peter and John had built such a relationship as brothers in the Lord uh, that they had this unity because of the spirit of God that dwelled down on the inside of them. It didn't really make no difference if it was Peter first or if it was John first. It just had to be on that day that the Lord, hallelujah, led Peter to be the, the leader, the spokesperson. John could have spoken up, but John did not speak. Peter is the one that spoke up. And Peter was the one that was coordinating, amen, his service at this time. And John was just working and walking along with Peter. And the man that was laid and sitting at the beautiful gate, he was expecting some money, but he got something that was better than money. Because money could not, money could not heal him. When you really, silver could not heal him. Gold could not heal him. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, there's something when you call on the name of Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. There's power in 
the name of Jesus. Matter of fact, Peter and John him, had just, uh, in the second chapter of Acts, had just left, amen, the prayer meeting where the Holy Ghost was poured out. Uh, and then after they got it, the Lord used them because they wanted to be a witness for God and they had the power and the boldness to even witness to this man that was sitting there lame and broken. And yet here comes Peter and John and it's going to be a day of deliverance from the man that's been down so long, 40 years, and here is this miracle about to take place. Hallelujah. He said, look on us. And then Peter takes it by his hand. Hallelujah. And the right, man right, is up. And the Bible said immediately, his anchor pose re receives strength. Hallelujah. At that same moment, there was a contact of faith there. He believed, he, he believed that he, he was going to receive something, but he didn't know exactly what it was going to be. And because Peter told him, we ain't got no sheet of, we ain't got no gold, but, 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 but he stretched out his hand and said, come on, come on, look on us, say, get up, rise up, and walk. Hallelujah, man, all of a sudden, strength is in his ankle bone. How did he lick up? My God, he never ever been able to do that. Don't tell me he wasn't ready for some church. How did he got his miracle? The Lord he healed him. The Lord delivered him. Do you not know that? Hallelujah, Peter and John himself. They didn't ask the man to follow him. I don't hear me. They did not ask the man to follow him to church, to follow them into the temple. The man was so blessed. The man was so attached to them. He fell in love with them. He fell in love with what they had. It rubbed off on him. He, he, he was able to get up from where he was. We got men and women all over the country that need to get up from where they are. They're bound and they're tied down. They're busted and disgusted. They're broken and they're wounded. But in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Hallelujah. No more crack cocaine. Like, ain't nobody talk to me. Oh, um, God can deliver. Let me hear you going on here. Walking and leaping. Walking. Uh, uh, ooh Another blessing. ooh -wee. Another blessing. Ain't nobody talking to me. Nobody's talking to me. Another blessing. Follow them into the temple. Can you hear me? He, he got his miracle. He did not run back home to his family. He ran and followed Peter and John into the temple. He didn't want these men to get away from them. If y'all going that way, where you going? I want to go too. It's in the temple. Could you imagine the people seeing this man in the temple that they had walked by that was lame? <laughs> that they brought them there day after day after day, and all of a sudden, oh, what would y'all would have done? Here he come walking in. Here he come walking in the temple. And most likely, there's some folks that was in the temple <laughs> that had carried him. And then when they see him, they probably did something, don't paraphrase it, they probably did something like this. Woo-wee! Another blessing. You don't have to carry no more. He, he, he's healed now. And he can walk for himself now. He comes in and goes out as the Lord leads him. And there were people sitting there in the temple looking at that man and said, Man, is this the one that was sitting at the pool? Some were skeptical. Some did not know. Some said, Well, it looks like him. When he was him, they looked at him. And I could see him too. Looked at him, and his hands looked new. Looked at him, his feet. Into. People were filled with wonder and amazement. 
in the wonder of God Jesus. We will come with you up in here. How the Lord has blessed your son. Isn't it a wonder how God is still working miracles, opening blinding eyes, causing the lame to walk, causing those that have deaf ears to unloose those ears, and those that cannot speak. And causing them to speak that in the name of Jesus, and people were filled with wonder and amazement because fear comes as man walking, leaping, and praising God. Praising God. What are you going to do today? Are you going to praise God for the miracle? You probably say, somebody say, I ain't got no miracle. It's a miracle just to be alive. It's a miracle just to be able to move. It's a miracle to be able, hallelujah, to go and get a drink of water. Because there's a lot of people not able to do that. There's people that can't see. There's people that can't talk. There's people that can't walk. Can you hear me? You better thank God for your blessing. You better thank God for your miracle. My God. And since this man, since this man, hallelujah, was there, I got to get ready to close. But since he was there, I could imagine the people looking and staring at him. Hallelujah, because here's a man that said all this time outside of the temple. It's what I don't understand. I'm just wondering why nobody ever carried him into the temple. Why did you leave this man on the outside? We you know this man needed help. We got people that are on the outside that need help. And while we go in the church, praising God and leaving and giving him glory, what about that man that's on the outside? Hallelujah, that's wounded and crushed. Broken and disgusted. Did anybody ever just take time to just witness to that man? You can't you can't make them come to church, but we can invite them. I'm talking to up in here. The right place at the right time. And not only that, he was with the right people. And he got his miracle. He got his blessing. And from that miracle, the church grew. The church had scattered. But when this miracle, you have to read on down. When this miracle took place, uh, they give an opportunity for people to preach. People preach now. He preached on what the Lord had done for that man. We got a living testimony right before our eyes. Y'all saw him on the outside. And he is now on the inside. He's been changed in a moment of time. Don't tell me God won't change your life. Don't tell me God won't turn things around for you. Don't tell me that God you can't strip the street. God can change at any time he gets ready. All we have to do is get in line with God and believe. God, I don't know what you're dealing with today. I don't know what you're facing. But I dare you to call on the name of Jesus. I dare you to take a step of faith. I dare you to believe God for the supernatural, the miraculous, and the phenomenal. I'm talking to somebody over in here. I just want to thank them all. Why don't somebody stand on their feet right now? And give God some glory in His place. How many know it's worth it? How many know it's worth it? How many know it's worth it? And it ought to be your testimony. Lord, that's what I want. I want to be in the right place at the right time. So I won't miss my miracle. And see, and see, if you wasn't there, you would not miss his miracle. But since he was there, he got his miracle. He moved in faith. He believed what the men said. And he stepped out, amen, in faith. God bless you today. Who is it here today that just want to grab a hold to their miracle? Who is it out there online that just want to grab a hold to the miracle? I know that this is men's day, but there's some men and there's some women that need a miracle in this place today. And some of you watching out there, you need a miracle today. And ain't nothing too hard for God. 
Who is it in here that's just going to believe God for whatever they need to be? Who is it out there that's going to believe God for their miracle? Hallelujah. Somebody going to come stand. There's a man coming up. Somebody else. Come on now. You're going to have to just be a man. Hallelujah. Come up. Whoever God touches, come on up and say, God, I need you for my miracle. I'm coming forward. I'm stepping out. And maybe somewhere where you have to say, Lord, you know what? Ah, this is it. This is the last time. I'm stepping out by faith and I'm going to receive. My miracle on today. God bless you. God bless you. Who else? Who else? Who else? Lord, I, I need 